Okay, welcome to another iPad painting tutorial. On today's tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to paint water ripples, the kind of ripples that you might see in a swimming pool. I'm all really fascinated by the way that natural elements react to the light and in different environments, and I just think it's a really beautiful kind of image to create. So as usual, I'm using the app Procreate on an iPad, but you can probably convert what I'm gonna show you here to a different app on a different tablet. But in terms of the app itself, Procreate, I've opened one of the default canvas sizes, A4. And if we just look at the canvas information, the dimensions, you can see the dimensions here. So it's literally the millimeter dimensions of an A4 canvas and it's 300 DPI. And like I say, it should be the default setting for the A4 canvas on Procreate anyway. In terms of the brushes, it's incredibly straightforward this time. I'm just gonna use the soft brush and the medium brush within airbrushing. Now don't mistake those for ones that are lower down. You have some here that are lower down that are called soft airbrush and medium airbrush, but these are just called the soft brush and the medium brush within airbrushing. And then in terms of the colors, I have pre-selected some colors, but again, it's super straightforward. I've only selected four different colors, so just these four colors here. Each of these colors has what's called a hexadecimal code attached to it. Each of these codes are in the video description but there's also a link that takes you to my Patreon page and you can download the color file that contains these four colors as well. You're also gonna find links to my Instagram where you can tag me if you have a go at this tutorial and also a Facebook group that you can become a member of and we've got over 35,000 members, a great community there. So check out the links too. And with all that said and done, let's get started. So the first thing I'm gonna do on layer one is go to my colors, my first color here and I'm just gonna to go to the color in the corner in that little circle and I'm gonna drag and flood fill the whole canvas. The next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna create a new layer, go to my colors, select the second color, go to my medium brush, put it at the lower end of 2% and about 70% opacity. And I'm just going to do some lines that are quite wobbly. I'm gonna do a few of those. I'm gonna have them varying in terms of distance between them them quite scruffy like this quite irregular you don't need to agonize over these at all then i'm going to go to my adjustments liquify i'm going to go to the push symbol i'm going to set it to about 40 percent size max pressure but i'm not going to have any distortion or any momentum i'm then going to go along my lines and i'm just going to start in part distorting them just by dragging the tool along I can go to one or two areas and just do a slight turn as well. You don't want to do too much of that, just a slight amount is going to do plenty. You can do it anti-clockwise or clockwise just to add a few points of interest. You can also play around with the expand. So again, I'm going to have it at 40% size, max pressure, and you can go to anywhere that you think is particularly interesting and just expand that out if you want. But again, don't need to do too much of that. I'm going to create a new layer. And this time I'm gonna cut across in a different direction. So we've got it diagonally coming from the left top corner to the bottom right corner. So I'm gonna do the opposite, roughly speaking, from the bottom left to the top right. But I'm gonna guide my line kind of through some of these ripple points. Not exactly, but a little bit. And we're gonna do the same for the next one. It doesn't, again, it doesn't need to be equal. It can be quite a big distance between some of these. And only roughly anyway. Again, we're gonna to go to the liquify. So adjustments, liquify, push. It's on the same settings as before. So I'm just gonna to go to this tool now and just push it around so that it makes for an interesting set of shapes. I'm then gonna take that layer and merge it down. I can then go to my adjustments, Gaussian blur, and I'm gonna blur it in to about 10%. Then I'm going to create a new layer. I'm going to go back to my colors and I'm going to use the third color along this time. I'm going to switch to my soft brush. I'm going to put it at around 4% size, actually no 5% size and quite low at about 20% opacity. And all I'm going to do is go into some of these shapes and just add a few blobs. So I might do within these different shapes that are created, maybe a, a series of small shapes. If we've got a thinner amount of space or a smaller space, some larger shapes, if we've got a large space like there, for example, 
couple of smaller ones, and just vary it up a little bit. And then we're just going to go across the whole image, pretty much doing the same thing. Again, not something you need to agonise over at all. Just change up the size and the, the shapes a little bit. So sometimes, like I say, you can have a really nice larger shape and go over a few times and then other times you can have a series of smaller shapes. And actually this gets you really quite a long way towards the overall effect. We've still got things we're going to do in it, but you can see already that much of the effect is generated with a couple of very simple techniques. We are going to push this further. We want to really bring out some nice qualities there. Okay, on that layer, I'm going to go to adjustments, Gaussian blur, and it's already applied softly anyway. We're just going to blur it in slightly more. I'm going to put it at about, hmm, about 5% should do. We're going to create another layer, go back to our colors, and we're going to use the light color that we used previously. Use it again. I'm going to use the medium brush again. I'm going to reduce it down this time to the really the lowest part of 2%. And I'm going to keep it at 70% opacity. I'll just show you. So you can create some nice thin sharper lines now. And I'm going to go in and any point where we've got a cross or lines that cut across each other. I'm going to go in and I'm just going to identify those some of those points initially. Little kind of junction points. Just so we start to get an idea of where we might start to really concentrate some of the white or the lighter colours even. And then I'm just going to turn the opacity down even further to about 40%. And I'm just lightly now going to start bringing in some sharper lines to areas coming out from the junction points and I'm going to have it really concentrated in that point where they do reach a junction but then they can fizzle out and fade out perhaps a little bit as they go further along. Now you don't need to be overly precious about this either. You can actually move quite quickly with this. You don't want to go all the way along, you're just going to have it coming out so far and then fizzling out. Then I'm going to switch to my soft brush. I'm going to have that soft brush about 20% and about the lowest point of 2%. And I'm again just going to start going round the edges of any of these shapes now. So we've got some areas perhaps where we've got quite a big shape and we can double line it to go around the outside of both of those points. In fact, I'm gonna turn the opacity up a little bit further. So about 40% again. And I'm gonna use that just to perhaps go around the edges when we've got like a large pale area. We can just go around the outlines a little bit. Doesn't matter if they then collide, join up in areas like this. Here's another shape. I'm just going to extend those lines and go around the outer edge in places. You'd have to do that everywhere, but really going to get a variety of marks now. But I'm just showing you the kind of things that you might want to apply in places. And what you'll notice too is that there are almost the hints of extra lines that you could add in in between the dark blobs. So again, pressing lightly, you can just start to feed in a hint here and there, maybe have it joining up. You don't need to press on hard all the way around. I'm just going to encourage a sense of that in places if appropriate, if you feel it's going to look good in that area. Here and there. So again, I'm just pressing super lightly. You don't have to go around all of the blue shapes because if you do too much, it's going to look too uniform and it's not going to look organic and natural. But you can use the outside of some of those blue shapes as a little bit of a cue and a starting point to give you an idea where you can start to add more of these white lines. And it's okay if they cut across each other a little bit, like here. And you can follow some of these lines, keep going. It's quite good fun at this point just to play around. Some areas you get 
splintering off of the line into two lines. I do think it's important to leave some areas where you don't go over the line too much and let it fade out and then you can bring it back into a sharper focus later on on that line so you've got a bit where it fades out maybe a bit here where it fades out and then I can bring it into a sharper line and focus over here and then a bit fade out again and you can do that all over the piece so choose where you think it's going to look more effective maybe in certain areas you're going to get quite a lot of the lines that really are a bit sharper If you want to do some of these super faint lines, you can turn it really low, to about 15%. And again, for some of these internal areas, where you're just having it fading in and out, you can just use it at a lower opacity. So you're getting hints of it, but not too much. And again, you can just see suggestions around some of these blue shapes. And it gives you a really good cue and starting point to figure out where to put some of your organic lines and shapes. Again, as we come into these junction points, you can just start to go over those lines that feed into that a little bit more. Let's just really strengthen up some of those concentration points. So look for where some of those most important areas are for you. Again, you can't really copy exactly what I've done because it's so random and organic that you're not going to get exactly the same as what I've got, but you're just using this as a starting point really, and you can make your own up as you go along. And we haven't used any actual white on this yet. So this is still the light blue or light greeny blue, kind of an aqua color. So we are going to go over this with white very shortly. And then it's really going to bring out some of the highlights. So we're just getting a foundation of some of these bright highlights in to begin with. And then we should go over it and just firm that up a little bit. Just a couple more over this side. It looks a bit empty. Okay, so with that layer, I'm just gonna to go to adjustments, Gaussian blur. I'm gonna blur it in just slightly to about the 3%. Then I'm gonna create another layer. I'm then gonna go along to my white. So really we're adding the brightest points in it now. We'll stay on the soft brush. We'll stay on the lowest part of 2% and we'll build it up subtly. So we will start with 20%, but it's still gonna be brought up gradually. And then I can just go to the points where I think it's going to be brightest. So certainly some of these junction points, I can imagine a real concentration of light. And then we've got a really nice shape here that I feel like I just want to highlight part of it. Not necessarily filling in all of it, but I feel like it's a, an important part that I just want to add quite a lot of light to. And equally here, I'm just going to add a little bit of a highlight. So you're not going over all of the light blue area, you're going over it and you're picking out just some points within that light blue and those lines. So certainly the junction points, but then just maybe a little bit randomly here and there as well. So you might get a line that comes across here and you might just lighten up a, a certain section of it and then it fades in and out in some places, but maybe it comes to a really sharp focus here. And you're just really pushing the contrast here for a really nice effect. So nothing I've shown you is particularly difficult, I don't think. It might take a little bit of practice just to get the right kind of balance, but each step kind of suggests what you should do for the next one. So I'm just picking out some parts of some of these lines for a nice concentration, adding in some of the brightest whites, especially on sharp corners and little junction points. It's already heading towards a lighter point in areas anyway, so I can just go in there with a the white and further push that. Some of the lines can have a really concentrated white on it as well in areas. Vary it up a little bit. It's worth sticking with this because the earlier part, perhaps when you're doing the 
initial lines and then you're using the liquify don't look particularly convincing as water, but the more you go down the process, somehow the more convincing it begins to look. And it, at some point, some kind of magic begins to happen and it starts to just kind of work. Again, you don't need to add too much of this. So it's on a separate layer. So if you feel like at any point you've really gone overboard and you've added too much, then you can always go in with the eraser and just remove bits perhaps where you've done too much. So initially just go for it, see how it looks, and then you can always modify it with the eraser if need be. So I'm really just trying to create contrast. So in order to create that sense of bright white and shine, then you need to have bits where it doesn't exist as well. So it's the combination, it's the contrast between the two. Then I'm going to add a new layer and still using the soft brush with the brightest white. So that's at the lower end of 2% still and up to about 50%. I'm just going to choose one or two areas, not many at all. So a couple there, maybe one there, one there, and a section over here perhaps, maybe one there. That will do. I'm gonna to go to my adjustments, volume. I've got it set to max on the transition, size at 30%, burn at 35%, and I'm just gonna slide that in to 100%. And it's subtle, but it just sends a bit more of a glow in one or two of these areas, as you can see. It's very subtle though. Okay, so I'm happy with that overall effect, but if you wanted to push the contrast a little bit further, then you can also do that. So let's go back a couple of layers. We've got the layer that had the blue blob shapes that we were adding, so we can go to the hue, saturation, and brightness. I'm gonna turn the brightness down to about 40%, and you can see already that really pushes the contrast. I can go to the background, do the same again, just to balance it out a little bit better. Put that down, maybe somewhere around the 45. And there's an argument that that works as well. And again, maybe something like layer four, we can go to the end symbol, play around with different layers. We certainly don't want it all the way down, but we could turn that to 80%, maybe layer two, we could turn that down to 80%, and then you're getting some nice contrast between those different areas now. Okay, I hope that's been helpful. If you've enjoyed following along, make sure to subscribe, hit the bell notification, and check out all my links in the video description. Thanks for watching, see you soon.